My name is Patrick, but you can call me 26. We're going to do another question, and the question in question is going to be course schedule. So you're supposed to take a number of courses n. They're labeled from 0 to n minus 1. You have an array of prerequisites, a, i, b, i. To take course a, i, you must have first taken course b, i. So you're supposed to return true if you can finish all the courses in a list of prerequisites. So we have this at our prerequisites, and we could represent this information in a graph. So this would, is what the graph would look like. So in order to take, for example, cost 0, we must have taken 1 and 2, right? So we could represent this information in an adjacency list, a graph adjacency list, and this is what that would look like. And we are now supposed to find out whether or not we can actually take all these 5 courses. So let's ask ourselves, can we start with 0, cost 0? And the answer is no, cost 0 has prerequisites of 1 and 2. So we would look in the adjacency adjacency list for its neighbors. So its neighbors are 2 and we find that we can actually start with 2 as the first course that we take uh, because 2 has no neighbors, has no um, has no neighbors so it has no prerequisites. So 2 could be the first course we take and after that we look at 0's other neighbor which is going to be uh, 1. We go back to 0 and then we look at 1. Can we take 1 as the next course and the answer is no because 1 has prerequisites. So we look at 1's neighbors which is going to be 3 and 4. So we start off with 3. Can we take 3? And the answer is actually no. We can't take 3 because 3 has a prerequisite of 4. So after that we go to 4 and we check whether or not we can take 4. And the answer is actually yes. We could take 4 as our, as our, pre, as our course because 4 has no prerequisite. So we take 4. And after that we ask ourselves whether or not we can take 3 now. And the answer is yes, we can take 3 now because we've done its prerequisite of 4. And after that, we include 3 as the next course that we have actually taken. And all the while, we're going to keep track of all the courses we've visited. And after that, we proceed to take 1 because you will notice that we have taken its prerequisite of 3 and 4. And now we have taken the prerequisites of 0, which is going to be uh, 1 and 2. So we can take uh, 0 as the next course that we can actually do. And so the answer is, in such a situation, we can take all 5 courses and this is the order that you're going to take them in 2, 4, 3, 1 and then 0. So the answer in this case would be true. We can't take all these 5 courses. So what about this? Right? We have 1, 4 and 3. Can we take 1, 4, 3? So in order to take 1, uh, we must have taken 4. In order to take 4, we must have taken 3. And in order to take 3, we must have taken 1. So you will see there's a sort of cycle that requires us to take 1 before the other and the other one requires you to take the other before the other. So in such a situation we have a cycle and we can't take this courses. The cost is one, four, three. So let's dive into the code and I think um, it will be easier to explain as we actually write. Okay, let's write the code. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create our adjacency list and also a set of all the nodes that we have visited. And we're going to put it in the global scope so that we can access it from a number of functions. We're going to write also another function that will do the dev first search, right? So we could put it in the global scope and this is just going to be the adjacency list is going to be called graph or you could call it um, something like map or whatever you want to call it, right? Um, as long as it makes sense to you. And it's going to have, it's going to be a dictionary. The, in, the cost is going to be the key and then inside it you're going to have a set of integers which is going to be the prerequisites, right? And we're going to start it off as empty like so, right? And then we're going to say var visited. Visited is, is just going to be a set. So this is going to be, um, we could say this is going to be a set and it's going to contain integers and it's going to start off as empty, right? So we're going to have those two. The graph, which is the adjacency list, where the, uh, the cost is the key and the prerequisites are going to be in a set and the visited is a set. You could use an array for, I'm guessing, in the graph, but a set is going to be faster on the axis than an array, right? That's why we are opting for it, right? So let's continue. Now, the next thing we want to do is um, we could loop through all the all the, all the the data in the prereqs. And here, you notice that the first element, it's a multidimensional array. The first element is going to be the cos, and the next one is going to be the prerequisite. So you could break it down, right? And then build up. As we loop through the prereqs, we could break this down, the, the inner... Um, array into the prerequisite and the course and then use it to build up our adjacency list right so that's the first thing we're going to do so you could say something like for item in prerequisites or whatever you want to call it you could say for course in prerequisite but then there's a course in a prerequisite i'll just consider the pair as an item we could say let course is going to be the first element course is going to be item zero like so and then prereqs 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 is going to be item 
one like so right so after that we're going to build our adjacency list how do we build our adjacency list we come here and we say graph and this is going to be course like so and we are going to default it because remember there are some courses that don't have prerequisites right so it's important to put a default um, a default in case there is no prerequisite for that particular course what we would do is we would just come here and we say default is going to be it requires a set so it could just be an empty set like so and in it we're going to insert what are we going to insert we're going to insert prerequisites right so if there are no prerequisites just put an empty set right and um, this in particular will help you get around some some test cases right when you're testing it with that right so ensure that you do this so we have now built our adjacency list with all the courses and the prerequisites right now we want to loop through our dictionary and get every single um every single every single set of prerequisites for each course right so we say for course in graph and where do we want we want the keys right so for each key, um for all the graph keys right we're going to call a function called DFS, right? But we haven't created DFS. So let's come and put it here. And we're going to put it here. And this is going to be, this is going to enable us to have it on the, uh, putting it here, we, ha we have access to the graph, which is on the global scope. That's why I did it there, right? So we're, go we're just going to use def first search. So we say here, func DFS. And DFS is going to take in, uh, it's going to take in cos, which is going to be an integer, like so. And this is going to be, it requires a boolean it's going to return a boolean which is going to be true whether or not you can take a course right so the first thing we're going to check is if while we are looping through the courses prerequisites and the prerequisites for those courses whether or not we encounter the course right so this is a case where you maybe have to do where there is a deadlock essentially what you're checking for here is where there's a deadlock where you have to do in order to do one you must have done three and in order to do three you must have done one so if you're searching one as the course and then you come across that you also have supposed to have done three which requires you to do one you'd find this that um the one the, the course would be or already be in your visited set right so we say here if visited if visited contains and what does it contain the actual course that we're looking at so if you need to do the course before you actually take the course right so if you need to have done it before to before you take it you just return false because it's impossible to actually do it there's a cycle right at some point in the taking of the courses right then after that we get all the value the value pair here the value pair in the set right that's the prerequisites we say god let prereqs prereqs and prereqs are just going to be graph and then we take the course so these are going to be all the prerequisites that you require else what you want to do right else we're just going to return what are we going to return we're going to return true right so get all the prerequisites right and um if they're not there return true and the reason you're returning true it, it means that we can take the course if two has no prerequisites it can be the first course we take like if you can remember our example right and then we check if prereqs dot is empty I remember it's empty is a lot more efficient than checking whether the length is zero we just return true right so we just return true right so if there are no prerequisites we can take the course or so return true else we put it in visited we say visited now there are prerequisites visited dot insert and what we want to insert the course right now if we want the course we want to check the the other courses in the prerequisites right so we say um for next course in three recs we call the function on itself if we don't get a deadlock so we say if not dfs and we pass in what we pass in we pass in next course if this is the case if we don't get this um if we get a, a negative from this we get false from this that means we should return false right that there's a deadlock right so you say return false right and if we are done with that what we should do is we should go to graph and take the particular course right the particular course and we would like to remove all right so what we're doing here is after we are done with all the prerequisites and we see that there are no deadlocks what we want to do is we want to go to the graph get that particular key and remove all the requirements in the set right so go there go to that like for example if one has a requirement of one and two and you have seen there are no more deadlocks we know we can uh, make it empty so that when you come across it we don't have to do repeated work right so we just say remove all right and then after that we go to visited and we clean it out we say remove 
and what do you want to remove we want to remove the cost right and at the end of all this what you want to do is just return we want to return true so this is our dfs and we're going to call it and we can call it up here so we say here we check if not dfs and we pass in the cost okay, let's put it correctly cost like that what we want to do is just return and what do you want to return false right so that's going to be the case we're going to return false and if this is not the case right if it goes through this and we don't get any deadlock or any problems here what we should do is when we're supposed to return something return true right so that's the key the code and we can run can finish here and see whether or not we get in our sidebar true right so we come here and can finish here returns true so we know that with our test case in particular this is working right so we know with our test case that this is actually working okay now let's try running it with our test case so let's come to lead code run it with the test case hopefully that goes well it does and if we submit it with all the cases hopefully that goes well okay so that's going to be that okay so the space complexity is going to be o of v plus e that is um this is for our particular example that we had this is um where we want to create all the courses and the prerequisites so we, we are going to create the adjacency list so this is how big the dictionary is going to be so it's going to be o of v plus e for the space complexity and the time complexity is going to be exactly the same because that's how we're going to navigate the adjacency list 